on it being on the internet and this video will be demonstrating Android running on the iPhone. This is an iPhone 2G and we demonstrated the Linux kernel running on this device over a year ago and unfortunately I got distracted with the iPhone 3GS jailbreak and there was some months where I had a hiatus when I wasn't working on the iPhone at all and so things got a little delayed but now I'm back and going to uh, show you some cool stuff so I wanted to be in the um, iPhone OS when this video started just to demonstrate that the iPhone can in fact dual boot uh, both the iPhone OS and Android so you know even if you install Android on your phone your iPhone can still be used normally so first we're going to shut down the iPhone Anyway, as you can see from the reflection, I'm using a very primitive tripod and an iPhone 3GS to record my video. I'm not exactly made of money, so <laughs> apologize for the quality of the video. Um, okay, so this is the Open iBoot bootloader that you guys were shown in the previous video. Uh, since my photoshopping skills aren't really up to scratch, uh, I, there's no Android button on this bootloader. However, um, I've hacked it so that if you hold down the home button on the Open iBoot console icon, there'll be a signal to boot Android. So right now it's initializing the NAND and loading the kernel and the init RAM disk from the NAND, which is the Linux kernel, of course. And now we're inside the Linux kernel. Familiar Tux logo there. Um, basically, uh, my RAM disk mounts the partitions, mounts some loopback partitions on the uh, data partition on the NAND, and then instructs Android to use that before passing control over to Android. So now Android has control. And we should see the frame buffer initialize and um, the Android logo come up pretty soon. So sorry for the long video but I wanted to show you guys the whole boot process so the Android logo with a nice little animation and sorry this took so long um, Last time there was a release, uh, people made fun of iPhone Linux deservedly for not having any of the drivers and not being really usable. But, you know, so I wanted to make sure that everything was usable before I showed this off. So, Android's booted. Uh, I have a Rogers prepaid set in here, so there it is, Android. Of course, it's not really production quality yet. I'd say it's alpha quality, um, but pretty much everything works. Um, first, we'll associate to the Wi-Fi. It's slightly buggy because <laughs> I didn't bother to uh, to implement all the um, proprietary driver not proprietary, but Android specific driver um, extensions so sometimes the OS thinks that it's not scanning but it is, see, we've associated. So I guess one of the things we can show you is uh, uh, how to browse the web, ah, jeez, I'm a little clumsy with this operating system. There's a little bit of a button shortage on the iPhone, so I've repurposed the volume button as the call and um, home button. So let's go to uh, Reddit. Maybe I should have gone to dig to be a few letters. <laughs>
So as you can see, it's pretty usable. I like this uh, feature of Android. The little zoom thing. You can quickly find the portion of the page you're interested in and it'll zoom out for you. So yeah, there's the browser. Um, second thing is probably playing music. I have to manually scan for uh, music because uh, it's designed to work with an SD card, which obviously the iPhone is not equipped with. Uh, this again. It's hard to uh, operate this thing behind a camera. It's a little sluggish, but uh, as I've told you before, it's running the debug version of everything. There's actually a garbage collector running inside a Linux kernel right now, just to make sure I don't have any memories. Mm. There you go. So, playing music. Uh, last thing I want to show you is uh, making a call with it. There's uh, this joke on the internet about the GNU phone where you had to give something like 20 command line arguments to place a call. And on Slashdot I read that <laughs> there should there ought to be two kernel versions, one for answer mode and one for um, dialing mode. I actually considered doing something like that as a joke, but um, it was more trouble than worth than it's worth. So um, I'm going to use uh, my desktop here to send an SMS to, uh, to this phone. And what should I say? A low world is always a good option. Just make sure I don't make any typos typing with one hand. So, Skype says it's sending. Hopefully, I will receive the message in a second. And there it is.